Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Abbas Ali, your orthopedics faculty with Marrow, and I have Dr. Meghna rank 10 INI set with me here. Congratulations, Dr. Meghna. Say hi to everyone. Thank you, sir. Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Meghna from JJM College. Yeah, so Dr. Meghna is from JJM Medical College. She started her preparation after internship. Okay, and she sat down and was preparing during the lockdown. That was uh, around March 2020, she started her preparation. Before I ask your story, I just want to congratulate you for such an amazing rank. Rank 10 is no joke. Thank it's you. an insane rank. And I can only imagine how much hard work you have put in. And I can see the charts that are hanging on uh, the wall behind you. Uh, so before I begin, uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate once again. I would like to congratulate your parents for raising you like this. Such an intense hard worker. Anyways, let me start by asking you this question directly. Which subject uh, video was your favorite? Surgery. Dr. Rohan surgery. Yeah, awesome. Right. So now tell me, when you started preparing with Marrow Plan C, how would you approach it in terms of video? See, because there are parts, there are videos. And once you watch a video, you need to prepare notes so that you can easily revise. So can you just give us an idea of how you would approach it, watching a video, and then how would you prepare notes? And how would you go about it? For a person who's starting now, it could act as a guidance. Um, first, I started with uh, first prof and second prof subjects. Uh, first, I used to watch uh, video for whole till evening or till afternoon and made my own notes during the class. And So uh, while watching the video, you would prepare the notes? I mean, yeah, yes, sir. So, so you had to pause a lot or were you watching at 1.5x or 2x? No, I used to watch it normal speed because I had to write my own notes and properly with all color pencils. With all so color I pencils like, and all highlighters. Yeah, I like to make my own notes rather than print it. So, I so you enjoy making notes? Normal. Yes, yes, because awesome. that is what stays in my memory long time okay. so i used to uh, make notes at, with, with normal speed and i used to uh, till evening and all i used to make notes so after the class i used to study whatever i made for that day the target uh, any system or uh, topics and at the night or the next day morning i used to solve the related modules in the question bank uh, so next day before starting the class uh, so before next class i used to like just glance through the previous uh, days notes like once and then start the next day started. okay so a typical day would be watch the videos as you're watching the videos prepare the notes beautify them highlight them give them colors and make it all interesting and then once you wrap it up revise everything and sleep uh, no once you wrap it up do the related question bank modules question right and then sleep get up in the morning revise whatever you have done previously and then start the next day Quick. once again okay awesome awesome now uh, what wasn't this tedious and time consuming for you uh, in the somewhere in the middle i felt that so like uh, for the, all the short shots of it i use i i like speeded up a bit like i used to watch but uh, in a fast way and like made uh, normal notes but all for the major subjects, I made proper notes. Okay. You realized it was taking a lot of time. For short subjects, you jumped the gun and started preparing just quick review, review notes and moved forward. Awesome. Awesome. That's how it is. So you need to be careful with your time. You can't just sit down and prepare notes for one subject for a few months. You have to be very careful with your time. And that is a very important thing that you have mentioned here. Now, now you have prepared fast notes. You have prepared awesome, amazing, beautiful notes. What would be your ideal notes? Because you have seen both the sides. What would be your advice to your juniors be like in terms of watching videos and making notes? Sir, it uh, does. It, I, there is nothing called ideal notes. It's all. No, no. It I know. I know. There is nothing called I ideal. I, I, I know that. I know that. I'm just talking about you. You have seen both the sides. What would you do? Now that you have seen both the sides. For me, the the notes which I prepared like uh, slowly and with all like listening to the class properly was the best notes. Because uh -huh. that would stayed in my long term memory, like and I could revise it quickly during revisions. But for the notes which I like uh, did very quickly without I mean without um, like not concentrating too much i had to like it took me quite long time for uh, revising yeah, so, them so this is what i wanted to highlight this is called return of investment of your time
So if you invest a lot of time in the beginning, the return of it will be higher, obviously. If you're investing less time, the return on of it will be less. But you have to be careful where you're investing time. If you're investing time in a subject that will give you more marks, it is worth it. But if you're investing time in a subject that will not give you more marks or topics that will not give you more marks, then that is not useful. So she smartly focused on major subjects that will give her more marks and made important notes clear, defined. And then she, you know, rapidly reviewed and wrote notes for subjects that were small, short and questions came from, you know, frequently asked topics. Wonderful. Now, what about the question bank, Dr. Meghna? How would you approach the question bank? Did you write down the points from the question bank into your notes or did you just book bookmark them? Um, I wrote the points which are like previous, uh, uh, like previous aims with the tag, uh, hashtag need PG or previous aims, not all the topics. Uh, if if it was not in my notes and if it was important like repeated topic then only I mentioned it in the notes not everything and all this uh, image based and all I that kind of like flowcharts and all I bookmarked yeah, because this is a problem I notice among students who get very apprehensive whenever they suddenly come across something new in the question bank. They are like, Ye we have not seen in the videos. This is not in the notes. Suddenly it is there in the question bank. Should we start copying down everything and they become very apprehensive and anxious. So you would only focus on the one with the hashtags, aims or INI set and then add those. Others you wouldn't. You just bookmark them and move forward. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Now, now, the, now you said that you would do the question bank of the related video that you have watched. So how, how did it help you? Because some people say if you watch a video and do the question bank, obviously you will get it right. What is the point of doing the questions now? Why not do it later? What was your opinion regarding this? Sir, uh... It helps you to apply what you have learned for clinical days and all. Uh, you learn a flowchart, but when you do questions, you'll actually get to know how to put it. Like, for example, neonatal resuscitation, we, we uh, study so long chart, but when it comes to like what next step you do, you forget like uh, practice makes it like the such questions like uh, perfect. So basically that is what she's saying. She's saying the application of the knowledge that you have acquired, you can acquire as many in you know, points. You can learn so many things. You can know so many stories. But only when you are answering specific questions, you will be able to appreciate what comes first, what comes next, what is more important, what is less important. So doing the questions doesn't necessarily mean that you're getting them right or wrong. The whole exercise is not to get you right or wrong. The exercise of question bank is to basically show you better which part of the videos are important, which part of the content and subject you should focus on. And only then you will be able to appreciate its importance. Right? You can understand how the examiner tells, asks you a question, how the examiner plays ball, how the examiner uh, throws you a googly. Only then you'll be able to appreciate it if you do the questions. And that now, what is about... also important for the, uh, like for example, classification and gradings we tend to forget frequently. So if you keep on practicing them, then only you can, by doing questions, that's the only way to remember how much of a times you read the gradings, classifications, unless, until you do the questions, you, you won't remember it. So question bank was, uh, that's why it's very important. So you must have bookmarked quite a lot of questions now, Dr. Meghna? Yes, sir. From the time of preparation, I did bookmark, but as the time went, I just went on filtering it. So how would you filter it? What was your strategy for removing the bookmark? Uh, by the time I get to know like this, I can, uh, even if I don't revise it the one week before exam, I can get it right. For such questions which I'm confident, which I was con confident of, I removed them and uh, I kept all the picture based and flowchart based questions for uh, for the last week. Okay, Marrow has that multiple bookmark selection where it gives you different uh, colors for bookmarking to yes. segregate the importance of your bookmark questions. How did you utilize that? Um, for, for that, uh, I didn't utilize it much. I bookmarked everything the same. You just bookmarked everything. Now, what about the facts that, so these are the facts that you have to memorize, right? So these are just facts that you have to memorize, mug up and come back to it again and again. Uh, were there any other things that you would do to help you revise other than your notes and bookmarks? I, uh, the complete factual things, I used to like uh, stick it on my wall, like from all the subjects as in when I prepared the note. At the night, I used to prepare the uh, wall ka paper also and I used to stick it. So whenever I used to take a walk or uh, having breakfast and all, I used to just glance through those like classes. So, so those are the things that are hanging behind you. So those are the things that are hanging yes. behind you. Right. Can you show us the wall that uh, you have used to put on all the post-its and stickers?
This is my wow. wall. Okay, first of all, uh-huh. my volatile stuff. So how, wow, this is so beautiful. It's so colorful, uh, and all the subjects mixed together. Uh, actually, I have segregated like. You have segregated. My, uh, now I want to ask this question. Like, no, no. There is this constant question that I get from students, sir. Everything seems important. Everything seems worth the post-it. Everything seems important enough to go on the wall. How would you differentiate? How would you segregate? You'll get to know when you do the questions. Actually, uh, what is frequently asked that that I have sticked. Not everything frequently asked and which is frequently like, asked and the one that is confusing. For different people, it's uh, different volatile topics. Right, frequently it's asked and the one that is confusing. And which I tend to forget personally. Yeah, and everyone is different. Somebody is strong in physiology. Someone is strong in pharmacology. Somebody is good in memorizing. Somebody is good in understanding. Somebody is good in uh, visualizing. Somebody is good in uh, rote learning. So everybody is different. So this is very fine tuned for you specifically. Okay. Now, did you utilize uh, a module called custom module in Marrow? Yes, sir. Uh, I actually uh, by the end, after I completed the modules, like not hundred percent, but most of the, all the important modules. Um, I started made, doing custom modules with all the hashtags, whichever I want. For example, so what I were the hashtags that you preferred things. while doing the custom modules? But before you answer that, I let everyone know what custom modules is. Custom modules is basically it will allow you to customize your exam or test by using a certain important tags like previous AIMS questions or previous INI set questions, numbered questions, most common all questions, statistical, factual, or image based questions. That way, what happens is the software runs through all the questions that are available in the question bank and prepares a test for you, which has all the relevant sorted questions of the specific hashtags that you have selected. For example, if I want to revise AIMS questions from medicine, I will select AIMS hashtag and medicine and I'll give a specific topic if I want to give. And then the questions will be generated from that specific selection. So it's a very focused way of revising things. So how did you utilize this, Dr. Meghna? Um, sir, uh, um, for example, for once I used to do only image based sometimes if I wanted to revise only image. But most of the times I used to put all the previous year questions like uh, previous need PG, AIMS, INICT and the updates. For example, sometimes I used to do only updates. Most of the time it used to be previous year questions and either it used to be updates of uh, clinical. Uh, if I'm very sleepy, I used to do clinical so that uh, I can think and I can come out of the sleep and picture based uh-huh. whenever, whenever I used to sleep. Okay. So I w- as I was talking to you before the interview, I, I realized that you are a voracious test taker. Is yeah, uh, you have been taking a lot of tests. So can you tell us a little yes. about that? Uh, in the day, I started giving tests when after uh, I started my preparation uh, in the March. So I started giving tests from the next month itself. I started with grand tests, and uh, my score was not uh, so good in the beginning. It's gradually improved. In that time, I used to give only uh, once in fifteen days or once in twenty days like that. Then I started giving once in a week, and it used to be fixed. Like every Sunday morning was my test day. Uh, three hearts morning three hearts like during night nine to twelve i used to give it was it it was it had become like a routine sunday morning is fixed for uh grand tests now megna dr megna a lot of students say Ki, what is the point of giving grand tests when you have not completed the subjects obviously you will not be able to answer questions now what is the logic there uh that is the thing when you in ex- real exam also you won't know all the questions uh when you solve questions which uh you can think that you have to practice thinking, like uh, rule out. Uh, that that is why it is not necessary to complete everything. You will have knowledge of all the subjects you have studied in MBBS, so obviously you can rule out the uh, options and you can answer. It's not necessary that you have to like complete hundred percent of the subject and then start giving. What Doctor Meghna is telling is, ki don't worry about only the correct answer for the question. Worry about so many other things that you will learn, the exam skill that you will learn, the, the ability to rule out options that you will learn, the ability to familiarize yourself with important topics. That Those are the things that you will learn if you attempt these tests. If you attempt these tests, only then you will be able to master these things. So I, that's what I keep telling every student who asks me, sir, when should I start taking grand tests? I say, start taking grand tests yesterday, beta. You should have started taking grand tests yesterday only. That is the time to start taking grand tests because grand tests will not only 
develop your exam skill, but it will also show you what are the topics you should focus on. Now, any advice uh, in terms of taking grand tests and reviewing them? Because some of the students, they, they find it very challenging to review all the 300 questions after they have given grand tests. They say that sometimes it takes days to finish those 300 questions. What was your approach for reviewing the grand tests? Um, at, in the beginning, I used to give like one week, uh, every week, one the grand test. So before the next uh, grand test, I used to like uh, finish reviewing all the questions. Like for example, I used to uh, review at least 20 to 25 questions in a day. So mm -hmm. uh, by the time I come to next grand test, I would have finished rev uh, reviewing all this. But when the exams came near, I, I was, when I was not able to re review all the questions because I had to concentrate more on uh, um, glancing all my volatile subjects. So I used to, uh, that time I used to concentrate only on my uh, wrong questions and the guest mm -hmm. questions, why I was not mm -hmm. able to answer this and how this guest guesswork is uh, working and why was it not working in that way. I used to so how, how did you know which questions you were guessing on? So there's a separate. Uh, uh, yeah, what is it? Can you describe what it is? For the audience, for people who don't know what it is, what is it? Uh, while while attempting the grand test, if you're not sure about any question, you can mark it. Like you have a separate bookmark there for the guest question. So after the test, you'll have those all the sub, uh, all those questions separately. So you can review just uh, those guest questions, and you'll get to know where your guess went wrong or right, and how, how can improve on your guesses. Because so that is so you were a good good guesser or a horrible guesser, Doctor Meghna? So it improved eventually. In the beginning, yes. I was a bad guesser. As and then I revised more and did start started giving more tests. So I. It's actually not that your guessing game has improved. It's that your ability to rule out options and come to the right answer has improved. That is what is happening. The more tests you give, the more uh, experienced you become in playing this game. And that is when you assume, you think that you're guessing, you're actually not guessing. There is knowledge subconsciously that is helping you make that answer. Yes, sir. And the grand test main thing is it makes you sit for three hours without getting up from that place. That is very important. You have to concentrate on the screen and all. every question is important during the exam. So you'll get the practice of taking each question at a time and put all your concentration only on that single question. And obviously from your subconscious mind, you will get, you will come across, like you will get to know this option is either wrong or right. One, if you get to know, even if it's wrong, it's a very good thing. So you'll have only three chances left there. So you have give hundred percent of your concentration on every question while attempting. So that that you get only while practicing. So it doesn't have what to was, be. Uh, what was your feeling one day before INI set exam? I was little nervous, but I was like, uh, uh, before be, the last time and all, when I was nervous, it was it didn't go so well. So I slept uh, more that day previous night, and I evening had stopped, like uh, glancing everything had stopped, and I just uh, uh, looking all my bookmark walls. That's all I did. So what about the recent mock exams? The INI set mock that was there recently. You had appeared for it? Yes, sir. What was your rank on it? Uh, my rank was 151. So it was a quite a leap, right? From 151 uh, mock exam rank to 10 real exam rank. Awesome. Awesome. So any hobbies that kept you, uh, you know, you know, helped you survive this difficult, uh, uh, stressful journey of yours? Uh, meditation and uh, talking to your friends and going for a walk any specific friend you would like to mention who has helped you get through this difficult time uh, my um, my like my mbbs friends like dr punit and my school friends like uh, kushal chag nanita awesome. Very awesome. We're very lucky to have so many friends. Amazing. And I'm, I'm, I'm so happy that you have shared your journey with us. And I hope this acts as an inspiration and as a guiding tool to the juniors who are planning to pursue INI set like you have. I wish you all the best. And I really hope that you find your happiness and your success in the future endeavors uh, that you proceed with. What is the speciality that you are considering to pick up? A few, name two or three among those. I'm confused between radio or dermat. Radiology and dermatology. Both are amazing branches and I'm sure you will be ex you'll do exceedingly well in either of them. I wish you all the best on behalf of the whole Marrow team, the tech team, the QBank team, the video team, and everyone are in like an awe of you, of your success, and we wish you all the best. Thank you, sir.
thank you at last i used to i want to thank my parents and all the maro faculties for their amazing support and uh, all their uh, positive uh, posts they keep uh, pushing through us during our difficult times and especially thank you sir for uh, keeping posted with all the positivity every time <laughs> thank you so much okay thank you dr megna bye bye thank you so much